Weirdal Yankovic, Mandatory World Tour. Okay. Yankovic. Weirdal Yankovic, World... <laughs> God freaking damn it. How about I just talk? Weirdal Yankovic's Mandatory World Tour. Hello, I'm Lux. And I'm Ember. And this is us raving about our recent concert experience with Weird Al Yankovic and his Mandatory World Tour. Okay, it was a blast. We are probably lower energy than we would have been if we recorded this right after it, but the, by the time we got back to where we were staying, we were kind of burned out. <laughs> Still on a high, but enjoying the aftermath. I really love the way he put together all the songs. And apparently his song order changes with every concert. Yeah, well, forget the orders of other concerts. I love the way this one opened. Okay, distract us with some video on the screens, and then all of a sudden, that's Weird Al singing Tacky. And he's in the Civic Center! He's walking through the building! <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait a minute, that this is the actual building? He's walking through the building! Wait a minute, I'm in the same building as Weird Al Yankovic? Hey, that's cool. <laughs> yeah, so right about then I started cursing that we had nosebleed seats. Good view, though. Yes, quite. I got several pictures, none of which I'm going to be showing because I got a lovely drawing of cheese sandwich for you. No, no, uh, the pony cheese sandwich. Also, it's not really for you. It was for Weird Al Yankovic. Yeah? I was hoping that maybe he'd glance up in the right direction, or I'd magically be at the right spot. Yeah. God, I wish I was in that lower audience. Especially when he started singing... What song was it? I don't remember the name. The one where he was like, Are you hot for me, baby? Or something like that. Oh, yeah. Basically, the love song. You know, I wish I was cross-eyed so I could look at you twice. Because he was kind of mauling the audience there. Yeah, I think several girls fainted. And I'm like, this is Weird Al, right? He is married, right? <laughs> I think so. Maybe. I don't know. Married with children, thank you. What, you just remembered that? No, I know that. Okay. Because I don't remember that at all. I just know I really like his music. And we listened to it all the way down to where the concert was. <laughs> And all the way back. So there's also this little bit of blurry line between, okay, what did we hear at the concert and what did we listen to it in the car? Because some of those were the same songs. What's really funny is uh, most of the songs we listened to on the way down, even though there were his older songs, actually ended up being in the concert. Well, apparently Lux hasn't gone to a lot of concerts, so he doesn't know how a concert tour based on an album works. I said older songs. Not the songs from the album. I knew the songs from the album were going to be there. I just didn't know how many older songs, how many older hits were going to be in there. Well, you have to do some of your classic hits whenever you're promoting a new album because people probably started liking you for your earlier work. So you got to give them a little bit of a reward for listening to all your new stuff. I, I don't think he really needed to promote his new album that much. Well, this is the second year of the tour. I'm pretty sure no promotion is required. Yeah, speaking of promotion, I was actually a little worried about our particular venue because he wasn't tweeting about it at all. Then I realized, oh, our venue sold out. That explains everything. <laughs> yes. Also, very impressed at the sheer number of costume changes he pulled off. Not just big ones that he had to go off stage for, but minor ones that they could just do while the stage was darkened. Because, you know, my night vision, I was able to catch a couple of those. I also love... When he was performing foil, how he had everything right in his little cart that was also his cooking area. That was great. And right perfectly. And this hat. <laughs> yeah, so everything was prepped behind the section that we couldn't see. So he had the plain foil, the wrapped piece that looked like a sandwich. He had the teapot and teacup and the foil hat. No one to take him out and drag him off stage, though. And for certain songs, even the band members were in costume. Specifically, what comes to mind is Dare to be Stupid and White and Nerdy. Though there were some technical hiccups, like his mic volume actually dropped out a couple of times. Mm -hmm. But his tech crew was really good about being on top of things. And you could tell that his effects people loved his music, because I could look down and see the guy doing the cues and just bopping along. Mm -hmm. 
I, I really like, even though I kind of knew this was going to be a thing if he did that song, but perform this way, I like his costume. Yeah. And apparently that's different every time because I saw a video of him performing that particular song and he was wearing a giant purple kind of bird costume. And uh, what would you call ours? It was still giant and purple, but I would think of it as more of a squid costume. It was a squid and he had an ice cream cone on his head upside down. Yes. And then, of course, the video in the background. That has got to be one of the creepiest videos ever because it's Weird Al's head on a female body. Yes, it's one of the more disturbing music videos that I've ever watched. And honestly, I've only ever watched it twice. Once to watch it myself and once to show it to somebody else. Enjoy the song, just get a little creeped out by the video. And speaking of video, every time the stage went dark, we were treated to video clips, some of which actually clued us in to what the next song was going to be. Mm -hmm. Some of them were from his appearances in other shows, on talk shows. Some of them were apparently these, these fake interviews he did with people where he edited, edited in his reactions with their reactions from other interviews, I'm guessing. Uh, then he had some classic media vi music videos in there, which would lead into the song. And just some PSA style videos and some stuff that was just genuinely disturbing because you know he could mm -hmm. lots of cartoon appearances came up too like the time he was on the simpsons and then the time he was on my little pony sorry i'm trying to think of more cartoon appearances because you said a lot and i'm like i can only think of those two there were a couple of them i just can't remember which ones were there i think no it wasn't family Guy, but it was another show uh, another cartoon there then there was the um Great reference to him, and I, can't, I don't know the show because I don't watch it, but where the kid's going, I got tickets to the number one rock singer of our age. And that lady's like listing this big star, this big star, this big star. No, Weird Al Yankovic. And she's like, oh. <laughs> Yankovic, not Yankovic. Yankovic. Weird Al Yankovic. Oh, well, moving on. And I have never worked that hard for an encore in my entire life. Worth it, though. Very worth it, because it was a two-song encore, complete with costumes, stage lighting, etc. But really, that was a lot of clapping and screaming. And a great fake-out when he went off stage, mm -hmm. doing the whole James Brown, no, I'm done, can't do it. Kept waiting for him, to, you know, to throw off the cape and go straight into the encore. You know, because he was even going, okay, you really want more? And he's like, no, I told you, I'm tired, I can't do no more. <laughs> And he leaves, and we're all like, did that just happen? Okay, keep screaming till he comes back. And then they sent out a decoy to toy with us. And that reminds me of all the medleys he did of all the songs in there, too, to fit all the songs into the show. Oh, he didn't fit all the songs, but he fit a lot more than could have been done in a regular two-hour performance. So a variety of medleys, also a variety of performance styles. Several of the songs were done more of a VH1 unplugged style. Mm -hmm. And I like the way he did fat, word crimes, and let's see, fat word crimes. Yeah, I just like those two in particular and the way the costumes were. I also like um, Party at the um, NSA. <laughs> um, CIA. Either way, it was a, a government organization that was having a party. <laughs> yes, but I think that one was written before the NSA got big, so CIA. <laughs> Also, the polka medleys. That is probably the first time I have seen any of the videos that go with those original oh, songs. Yeah. And in some instances, that was probably better that I hadn't seen them before. My God. I can't think of one in particular you're referring to. But there's a certain lady who used to have a Disney Channel show. <laughs> yeah, that and the sexy and I know it. For a second, I was like, is that really the real video? Because I never thought this song was supposed to be ironic. Because <laughs> that just could not be much less. There's not much you could do to make that less sexy. <laughs> yeah, I was like, is that stuff really? It, it's it's jiggles. I'm pretty sure. Okay, I'm trying to keep it as non-descriptive as possible, just in case we actually hit, get hit with any kind of ratings. <laughs> <laughs> I like to keep it as PG as possible, even though there's some minor cussing here and there. Yes, but if anyone really wants to know, they can look at the Poke Medley in the video, you know, the original video. We don't need to go into detail. Mm-hmm. Uh, any other points you'd like to bring up? 
um, not just the costume changes, but the transitions between songs oh, and yeah. costume reuse. Because he had that pink bathrobe for inactive, yeah. and then it worked for, for eBay. eBay. Like I said, his transitions between songs were some of the best transitions I've ever seen in a live performance. <laughs> From one song to the next song, and if he needed longer, he would play those videos, which would blend everything together, and it would also keep you excited for the show while you were waiting for the stage to change. Yeah, because that's another thing. No actual breaks... You know, except when we were screaming for the encore. No opening acts to buy extra time. Just straight performance. Yeah, he basically introduced himself and said hello to the audience right after the first song. And it was only real quick, then he went right into the next song. And the stage setup was really nice, too. How he had the band people and how he was able to utilize the screens. Yeah. Well, a lot of venues now have screens, so... It seems to be more standard to incorporate them, but most of the time it's just actual footage of the artist, you know, for the sake of the nosebleed seats. Though, when I went to Miranda Lambert a while back, they incorporated music video footage. Almost every time there was a video that went with the song, they incorporated some of the footage. Mm -hmm. Stop kicking me. <laughs> <laughs> the cat was kicking her. And you just heard the cat. Yes. I know. Another thing that's reminding me of the concert right now, I am dying of heat stroke, which is about how the end of the concert was. That concert hall got hot. Yeah, I kept looking over it going, is she, is she going to be okay? Are, are you okay? I asked her a couple times, getting really close, are you okay? I shouldn't be whispering because you're probably not hearing me right now. Because <laughs> I could have been two inches from her ears. I'm like, oh, I forgot to bring my earplugs. This, this is actually a tip. If you go to any kind of concert, I know it sounds stupid, but you'll still be able to hear it. Bring earplugs. I'm like, why would I want earplugs? I'm going to listen to the music. Yes, but the earplugs will still allow you to listen to the music, but not damage your hearing. Yes, but this was still much quieter than the Legend of Zelda concert. I was still able to hear afterwards. <laughs> I was surprised because we were both like, hello? I was joking. What? Precisely. Uh, another difference between this and the Legend of Zelda concert we went to was the fact that we didn't actually have to wait in line. We got there a little early and we went straight in. Well, at the Legend of Zelda concert, we were out there before the doors even opened. This time we waited until things were open. What was different was that we didn't get patted down. All they had to do was look through my purse and they just waved us through. Yeah, they just wanted me to... Show my pockets, open up the folio I had, which had the pictures, a printed up version of the art you're seeing on screen right now. And I just had to open up my 3DS case so they could see inside and see that it was a 3DS. Yeah, they barely glanced at my purse. My 3DS didn't even get a nod. Mm -hmm. But I had a pocket just for it. So. And the concessions were different because it seemed like it was a different booth that was open and what was being offered was different. Even the brand of water was different. Mm-hmm. And we did pick up some swag on the way out, some Word Crimes t-shirts and buttons. Yes. Goodness, not that I need another t-shirt, but Word Crimes is one of my favorite of his newer songs. And, you know, I don't really need another poster. I already have the albums. From what we understand, it's they make more money off the merchandise than they do with the actual uh, selling of tickets. So this is the reason we bought merchandise. One of the reasons to be supportive of the artist, mm -hmm. so... Because we both love Weird Al. I don't know why people call him Al, though. <laughs> uh, check back to an old interview. <laughs> why do people call you Weird Al Yankovic? I don't know. People are just mean. I don't know why they call me Al. That's pretty close to what he said. Yeah, which reminds me about that fake movie trailer. I would watch that movie. Yes, I, I would watch that movie. It's a 100% fake, but I would so go watch if they made the whole thing like that. I would like... Yeah, especially since they got Weird Al to cameo in the trailer for a fake movie about his life. That was, like, perfect, because I'm pretty sure I've seen that before, but that was awesome. Mm -hmm. Ah, well, I guess it's time to wrap things up. So, what were your final thoughts on the concert? It was a lot of fun. I'm glad we went. I wish we'd had aisle seats. It would have been nice because there was interaction both along the aisles and in the first couple rows. Not just the VIP seats, but the regular seats as well. And maybe he would have seen my art then. Woe's me. <laughs> you posted it to his Twitter account. Maybe someday he'll see it. Well, I posted it to my Twitter and notified him. 
through his Twitter account. Okay. <laughs> you forget. I don't understand how Twitter works because I don't do social media. I don't think anyone understands how Twitter works. People just use it. <sighs> well, I really enjoyed it. I can't believe Ember actually had to talk me into it. Oh, we were thinking about going to something else later. Should she give me a choice? It's never a good idea to give me a choice. Well, I didn't want to spend the money on tickets in a hotel room if it wasn't something he really wanted to do. She forgets giving me choices confuses me. So, yeah. Like I said, I can't believe she had to talk me into it. And this has been our shameless bragging that we went to Weird Al Yankovic's Mandatory World Tour concert. If you get the chance, go see it. Thank you for listening. If you want to be notified of new episodes, please subscribe. If you enjoy Lex's art, you can find more on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Really like Lex's art? He also has a Patreon page and does take commissions. Please check the link below for commission availability.